Okay, let's kick things off. Uh, my name's Jasper Lawler. I'm taking over from Michael Hewson. For those of you who have attended the events before, I'm joined by Colin Szczynski, our market analyst, chief market analyst in Canada. Um, you should all be seeing this uh, risk warning on the screen. Um, I'm just going to cruise through the next pages of that, and, uh, and then we can get on with things. Um, any kind of questions? Uh, at all throughout. We have a Q&A &A or a chat box. Feel free to fire them through and uh, we'll address them as, as best as possible. So, the sort of general thinking here was to um, cover some of the major indices, namely the American and Canadian indices that would be mostly affected by this US data. Uh, but also gold tends to be a big mover around these events which um, will be uh, strongly impacting Fed policy. Uh, of course, it moves on Fed minutes and Fed policy statements, but it does tend to move on NFP because you know the state of the labor market in the U.S. obviously dictates strongly um, how U.S. Um, uh, the U.S. Fed's progress towards hiking rates is coming along. Um, I thought it would be uh, good just before we kind of get into some of the specific markets just to look at some of the kind of numbers that preceded this. So just as an FYI, so all of you I'm sure you know that uh, the last month we saw a bit of a miss in the, the NFP. Um, it was still above 200k, it was 214k. Um, this month we're looking for 230k. And um, again, I'm sure most of you are aware, but for those of you who are not, Typically, what we're looking for is if there is a, a number that beats expectations, then we're looking at a stronger dollar, uh, a number that misses a weaker dollar. Conversely, if we're trading euro dollar, obviously, you know, a, um, a missed number, and we're probably going to see a, a rally in the euro. Um, number beats expectations, probably expect to see the euro to sink. Now, it's not always as black and white as that. There's a few internals within the number. Um, in terms of the participation rate, um, a big one at the moment is the uh, average earnings, uh, in, uh, which, which is also going to be released simultaneously. Uh, the expectation there is 0.2% earnings growth in the month, putting it at about 2% over the year. And then, so some of the other jobless data that we've seen, uh, uh, the unemployment data that we've seen this month, there's actually been a bit of a tick higher in the jobless claims um, each week. We did see a number over 300k, which we hadn't seen in a while. Um, that did it did come down again below 300k this last week. Um, in the ISM data, the the employment ca uh, it fell from the month before. The ADP missed expectations. Um, so you know a slight kind of downtick in the data here. Um, but I think we should caveat that by saying that it, the data is still showing general strength, just a slight move down on the month prior. So then there is, you know, some call for questioning whether this um, 230k estimate is right, given that that's obviously above the prior month when some of the other indicators are dropping. These other indicators don't have the best track record of predicting the NFP number, so you know we could be looking at 300k for you know these these numbers can come all over the place, but this is all probabilities. Um, yeah, Jasper. Yes, Colin, you're, you're Hi, back. Can with you us, hear right? me? Yes, yes I, I thought can. I'd say. Yeah, so the numbers that we've had have been uh, uh, particularly, I think the ADP is important. It wasn't the burn burner, but at the hmm. same time, seven out of the last eight months have been above uh, 200,000. So overall, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, I think what you're, you might see, we might see here is that uh, in, in, in November was that we've been on a pretty good roll on U.S. employment, and, and eventually you're going to pause. But if your pause is still holding above 200,000, it, it's pretty good. I think the, uh, mm -hmm. the most important thing we're, we're looking at here is uh, is what does this mean for the Fed and, and what does this mean for interest rates? So a, yeah. as we head into the numbers, uh, I, and that'll be how it affects stock markets. If it looks like uh, interest and uh, interest rate increases may come sooner, the stock market's more likely to go down. If if it thinks that maybe interest rate increases will get pushed off, then uh, then the stock market could go up. The uh, and, and 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 reverse for the U.S. dollar, a, a faster uh, interest rate increase could boost the U.S. dollar and knock down uh, knock down boost the U.S. Yeah. dollar, knock down other currencies, knock down gold. So, but I think the range we're looking at here is probably 200 to 250. 
Mm -hmm. If you're anywhere in that, and, and I posted my guess on Twitter at, right down the middle at 225. I, I uh -huh. think if you, um, I think if you if you hit within that range, it'll probably be a fairly limited reaction. I think it's if you go outside that range, though, you might get a fairly a, a fairly big reaction. And and just looking, I see you've put up the uh, the chart here on the S and P, uh, and and we can see at this point here that uh, that we can go one of two ways here, either. Either we can break out and keep on going, or or we're putting in a double top, and 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 I think that the uh, the data certainly today should give us a bit a little better uh, indication, particularly as we start heading towards the uh, the Fed meeting a little later this month, where um, we've had some chatter out of out of people like. Um, uh, Vice Chair Fisher and others talking about uh, uh, a lot about that considerable time guidance. So there is a possibility mm -hmm. that they may uh, they may at this coming meeting adjust their uh, their expectations for for interest rates. So I think this could be a uh, set the a real trend for trading over the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, Colin? Do you see any potential divergence and reaction between stocks and the U.S. dollar? Because um, you know, say we did see a, a slight miss as we did last month, um, still above mm -hmm. 200K perhaps, um, but uh, maybe not quite hitting the 230. Do you see the dollar and, the, and, and stocks reaction differently in that kind of scenario? Uh, it is possible. Uh, in general speaking, I think that the, uh, the stocks and uh, indices in general have been defying gravity relative to the uh, relative to the uh, forex markets we mm -hmm. saw back in uh, back in the summer we had a huge rally in the US dollar and it eventually caught up to stocks in October and uh, and this week we've seen the US dollar start to lift off again and we haven't really seen the same kind of rollover in uh, in, in indices yet. The only one we've seen it in was the DAX, which you noted, uh, we're noting on, on Twitter, and, and both of us were talking about yesterday with that, yeah. uh, the bearish engulfing and the key reversal that we had. Now it's trying to make that back, but still that was a pretty major uh, major technical turn yesterday, and I know the ECB has been out trying to uh, prop things up with uh, with talk of next month, but uh, <laughs> you know, we've heard that kind of talk before, right? I mean, they've been talking since, uh, since January, and... Uh, That's all they do is talk, yeah. Yeah. Even I, I saw this morning there's uh, the the repayments for uh, next week are 14 billion. So how much assets are they going to buy to offset that? Well, exactly. Um, should we um, should we have a look? So I pulled up the the S and P there. Um, that's pushing right into the highs. I can also have a look at the um, the Dow, but I'm going to also make sure I bring up the um, the Canadian index just because it's yes let's talk about that for a couple minutes when these uh, when these numbers come out at the same time obviously we've got that direct comparison there um, here's the here's the the, the US 30 uh, we can say that uh, we're already in terms of sort of uh, futures markets and the, the, the prices that we trade off at CMC already kind of pushing into new all-time highs going into this so looks like a bit of confidence that the numbers going to be okay would you say Colin? Uh, yes, I think people are still, uh, and, and as I think people are still thinking that the economy is going to remain in this uh, in this sweet spot, where uh, where the economy is growing fast enough that it's great for corporate earnings, but not so fast that it forces the Fed's hand to uh, to act earlier than uh, than than they would want to act earlier or more aggressively. Exactly. Yeah, because that that's the consideration here is that stocks kind of want this Goldilocks scenario, don't they? Where there's this the red hi uh, the fa uh, the rate hike is still kind of being put off, but we've got a kind of steadily growing economy. But then you look at the U.S. dollar. Actually, that should theoretically be trading um, higher with the you know as a as a rate hike comes closer. So you sort of feel like if you saw if we did see a, a big jump in, in average early average hourly earnings, uh, maybe breaking out of that 250 mark that you mentioned, you would imagine that perhaps the U.S. dollar would react more strongly to that than than stocks. Maybe that would you know stocks would be outside of their comfort zone there. Suddenly, with the accelerations taking place a bit a bit too much. So potentially, you know, two different types of trades going on here with with stocks and the U.S. dollar. Um, Absolutely, and on top of that, uh, as a general thing, and, and one thing we want to watch for with the hourly earnings is that inflation's been coming down in most places, especially w with the uh, with the falling price of uh, falling price of oil and, and other commodities. But U.S. and Canadian inflation has held up to date. The uh, it, it isn't it hasn't worked its way through into uh, into the consumer prices, which which leads you to think of one either one of two things: either either it hasn't happened yet. 
or inflation pressures are already building in Canada and the United States, but they could get masked a little bit by the uh, by the decline in energy prices in in Europe, the uh, you know, and other places. We've been seeing that yes, there's no question inflation has come down. It's it's holding up kind of stubbornly high here in North America, so we want to uh, keep an eye on that as well. And uh, since we've got, got a couple of minutes, I wanted to talk briefly about Canada. The labor force survey is out this morning. Uh, my guess for that was a 10,000 uh, increase. The uh, I'm looking at what we're, the street is looking for zero. Last month was a 43,000 increase. It was split pretty pretty decently, evenly. 26,000 full time, 16,000 part time. The uh, but Canada's had a couple of good months in a row. So uh, normally after you have. Uh, that kind of a month. I mean, a four, 43 for Canada, we usually multiply by 10 for the United States, so that would be like a 430k print for non-farm payrolls, which would be spectacular. And and so Canada's come off a couple of really good months here, and uh, and so it's time for some sort of a retrenchment. Uh, I actually I thought we'd get it last month and went negative, so this time I'm I'm a little more optimistic because the overall the economic data for Canada has been pretty good for the last month, and uh, and even comments out of the Bank of Canada talking about uh, the economy is it looks like the, uh, Canada is finally starting to benefit from the improvement in the U.S. Canada always lags a bit, and, but it looks like the, the growing U.S. economy is starting to spill over the border, which is a good thing. And at the Bank of Canada statement earlier this week, they talked about increasing exports, which is also a good thing. Uh, that can be a combination of the improving U.S. economy and the drop in the loonie. So, uh, that would be that. So I think that overall, you'll probably see the uh, employ employment not, not fall qu off quite as much as the street is thinking. So yeah, we are seeing a bit of a bit of a fall off today in the old Canada 60. You think maybe that's um, getting a bit overdone? Well, I mean, obviously it's going to be strongly impacted by these numbers. If we get a strong upside, there's some. Yes, some, I should know one thing is. about the Canada 60, Jasper. Yeah. Is uh, Canada 60 is one of the only indices we trade that's actually on exchange hours. It's not 24. Mm -hmm. So that's actually still from yesterday's close. Gotcha, uh, that doesn't yeah. factor in the overnight trading. So what we're seeing that big drop off of the last three days is more from the uh, the collapse in energy stocks mm -hmm. because the oil price has been coming down. Yeah, absolutely. So for Canada employment, uh, you're more likely to see it in uh, in the um, in the in the dollar rather than in the stocks because oh the other problem with Canadian stock uh, stock indices this week is it's bank earnings week and banks are about 25 percent of the index and they've all missed. Ah. So, um, so I have to say, there's a couple of other factors in stocks that are not related to employment this week. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so a bit of pressure in, uh, in the Canadian index just coming from oil prices and, and the banks there. So, um, yeah, maybe the uh, you know if this can be an offsetting feature, some strong employment numbers, we've got some some losses. And you're right; it might be good for a bounce. And I noticed on the chart, on the index chart, you were getting a little bit of a positive divergence on the RSI. So it is possible we might be seeing some of this get washed out. And yes, if we got a good employment number, could maybe finally help to shore it up a little bit. So it looks like we're about a minute away, are we? Um, so let's. I'll pull up the old Bloomberg on the screen. There um, we go. Let's keep go ahead, Jasper. There we are. And. Uh, so we'll wait and see what uh, what emerges. This is the uh, this is going to be the key one. Yeah, I always look at the revision as well because that impacts the headline number. And we'll see if we get anything there. I think we might get a little bit of an upward revision. Yeah, if that if that revision from last month could actually put us past the expectations from the last month, then actually we can't even call that a miss anymore and you know the the trend is still well on its way higher. Here we go. Oh there we go. Three twenty one. Wow, look at that. That's huge. And uh thirty K upward revision, fantastic. fantastic. And so Canada, it's, it's, okay we did the if we got the ten K decrease I thought we'd get last month. So, so US this is so huge Canada. huge number. That's that's well in excess. Let's see how stocks are reacting to that. Way way into new highs. New Again, highs and away we go. We've got that eighteen K waiting for us in the in the Dow. It's stuttering a bit. Maybe this um maybe some worry creeping into the stock markets. Oh. Well the Euro's pushing right down to uh the lows that it made. This whole big move higher after Draghi, which is getting completely wiped out now. 
Yeah, no question about that. Should have a uh, big impact on the U.S. dollar. Let's have a look at gold. Gold plummeting outside of this. Uh, well, it's you know it's uh, it's definitely seemingly definitely breaking, breaking down. down. Yeah. So we've definitely, and we're seeing the RSI rolling back under 50 on your chart. Actually, that's rolling under 40. So, yeah, so we're looking at uh, definitely a strengthening of the U.S. dollar. That is a huge, huge number. No yeah, question so let's about have, it. Let's have a look. What did I um, do with some of this other? So how, how are we looking at the rest of it here? So we've got um, revised higher from, look at that, t above 240. So maybe, yeah, so it's all just, it's generally good because I think the expectation was, what, 233 or something last week, uh, last month? So now we're at 243. So, you know, we're, uh, we're high there, 321. How are we doing for the um, on the earnings front? Uh, earnings 2.1% uh, in line. So, I, again, it, it looks as though inflation pressures are basically holding up in North America. So that's important because... Um, it keeps the pressure on the Fed. If you've got imp imp increasing employment and, and higher in and rising inflation, puts the pressure on the Fed to act sooner. So you'll yeah. probably see even more calls from the Hawks to uh, move up the timetable. Now, a couple of them, it's their la the, the, this is the last month before the rotation again. But yeah. uh, but uh, but still, you'll probably hear increasing ha calls from the uh, from the Fed Hawks to uh, yeah, uh, sure move up the timetable. Going crazy on this one. That, that is, is already spectacular. Is He's been coming out saying that even they should start um, selling off some of the the assets that have been purchased even before they hike rates. So, well, well, do, you, do you think that's in any way likely? Well, it's, I don't. I, they, you, they've been tossing that around for a while. I think they're gonna. They want to do at least one rate hike first and see how it goes. But they mm -hmm. can certainly start by even if they don't sell stuff, just by not uh, not reinvesting interest or not uh, not rolling over on maturity and just kind of letting it run off passively. We'll maybe see that a little later in the next year, but who knows? Maybe they'll move that up first rather than the interest rate hikes. It's a good, it's a good question. Yeah, it's um, a way thrown off the market. Um, well, gold's extending its move down there. Yeah, definitely getting some sustained strength. How are, how are the indices looking? What uh, what are you lot uh, trading out there? What's um, any kind of questions for us? Feel free to throw them through to the um, the chat area. Um, Yeah, euro still still holding the low, but you, have, you sort of tend to feel like that's not going to last too long. Look at that dollar yen, one one twenty one. You know, I'm go. looking here at the Dow, and I've I've got it on the one minute chart, Jasper. Yeah. And uh, you're actually getting a bit of reverse rever the reversal here. We had a bit of a spike, and now it's actually yeah. coming down. People are actually selling a little bit into the news. The street might be starting to think, gee, maybe the Fed will have to move things up. Yeah, I oh, look at that. Yeah. I think we're actually we're actually lower than we than we started. Uh, we are. Yeah. And yeah. dollar index is up huge. So the dollar's up against everything. Look at that one per one twenty one yeah. on dollar yen. So dollar absolutely loving it. Stocks not so much. Um, and a bit of that. Yeah. Then look at that. The S and P. Uh, if we put that down to a shorter term chart. Um, yeah. I mean that's a false breakout as we currently stand. Um, you know, if this if this closed it as is, that's um, yeah, that's not too. Positive that's a key reversal, all time high, yeah. and if you had a lower close, we'll uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that through the day, certainly, especially after we had a, a bearish key reversal in the DAX yesterday. Yeah. It's, See if we get one in the Dow today. And so that would be a double whammy for indices. And something I've been watching for for a while as we as we've moved into December, is we're actually into this this first half of December is five to six weeks after the the end of QE3, and after mm -hmm. QE1 and 2 that was a really bad time for a liquidity crunch. But what's propping us up on the other side is that December is usually a great month for stocks. So I've been watching to see how this battles out, and we may continue to see this battle out over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, do you, do you see those two factors just sort of uh, equalizing each other, and maybe we're just going sideways into year end? So or? far, yeah. So far, that's been the case. But I think now this puts a lot more uh, attention to the Fed meeting that's coming up a little later this month before the holidays. They're the last of the uh, be the last of the last big big central bank meeting for uh, for 2014. And um, in, uh, heading into this morning, it was you know probably I was thinking it'd be fairly non uneventful, but uh, mm. but uh, things may change. <laughs> yeah, not so, not so much as it turns out. I mean, um, yeah, you were talking about the the Fed's um, inflation expectations um, before. Um, <clears throat> do you, uh, 
do you see that? Um, and, you know, how do you see that weighing up against the? You know, we've got this strong labour market, and uh, the Fed have. They've been a bit different to the European central banks, uh, as you kind of referenced, where in Europe we've been kind of saying, oh, well, these lower oil prices, I mean, that just affects that. That changes everything. And obviously in the UK, we've been blaming the um, slowdown in Europe. Uh, Europe have the slowdown, so inflation coming down. But it, in the US, they've got the lower oil prices as well, and the same in Canada. But they're sort of saying it's just a temporary phenomenon, and actually they're expecting the target to get hit in a not-too-distant future. So we've got that inflation outlook plus this total strengthening in the um, the labor market seemingly happening are they going to bring in the the time frame do you think for the rate hike maybe a little bit i, I think most people were looking at at them doing something to say mid year around june this could uh, this could they could bring it up or at least move up their guidance say, uh, with a possibility of say march i still don't see them doing much be that moving something that much faster than that yeah. But then yeah. it's interesting too, because then what does the Bank of England do? Because my feeling has been that uh, that the uh, the Fed and the Bank of England would would go both go probably in tandem late June, early July, and yeah. uh, especially since the Bank of England doesn't want to do probably doesn't want to do anything before the election. So this may uh, this could change the uh, the timetable on the U.S. I don't think it'll change the timetable in the U.K. Yeah, interesting. So then th that being the case, then we you know we're looking at the pound here. Um, we've got this low at 156. Um, you know, we're heading into that right now. You know, this this possibly does shake up the the timing of the uh, the two prospective rate hikes. Bank of England not looking any time closer to the uh, the election. We're probably looking at at least June, um, and then but the Fed potentially sooner. We, you know, we may be even saying March. So that, you know, that's downward pressure for the the pounds, and you know, there's the distinct threat of this 156 getting lost now. Yeah, now the Dow's taken off again, and it's up over. Uh, it's up, uh, spiked up to seventeen nine fifty. So this eighteen thousand is getting awfully close. Yeah, I guess that's. I mean, a lot of people have got to have that eighteen thousand in mind, and uh, you know they're not gonna, they're not gonna liquidate till they see it. I think you're right. It's a big round number, and indices get drawn to that sort of thing. I remember the, uh, I, I remember the big drive to, uh, a, you know, a few years back to the the 50 bucks on silver, or you, you've seen other ones where, uh, where you just kind of get drawn to these numbers, and uh, and uh, so I think that's probably the case here in the, uh, with the Dow as well. Interesting little technical note. Just uh, you know, we've got the um, the high that we made over here, on the, uh, the 21st of November was was an all-time high at some point. We got to, we failed to break through it, got through it, and it's kind of smashed lower in early trading yesterday just because of the whole uh, ECB situation. But it's just interesting to note these technical features that we've literally bounced off there almost to the to the point. Um, so anyone who had their their bids in down close to that uh, that all-time high are doing well at the moment. How are we doing over there? How's there? How's the US, how's the CAD looking? Yeah, it's pretty much the dollar CAD. Yeah, it's, it's not actually broken the highs yet. Um, maybe, maybe just uh, do, you, do you get a feeling that this uh, this trade's getting a little bit overdone? The, uh, I think so. Trade? I think it is. I, I I don't think that people are going to take the uh, the 10k drop as a as a big deal because of the fact that the uh, that, we, that Canada is coming off two really good months, and usually, they, usually they have a retrenchment uh, after that. And I'm just looking here: the full-time, part-time split. So full-time for Canada was a 5,000 increase. Part-time for Canada was a 16,000 drop, which basically offset the 16,000 gain from the previous month. So basically, when you're looking at a, it's a small drop after two big gains, and it was pretty much all part-time. So uh, nobody's that's not enough really to uh, to push the breakout on on dollar CAD. Even though it looks like yeah. it wants to, it, it'll probably take another run at it. But I, unless the U.S. dollar goes completely bonkers, um, it'll probably that, that double top may still hold. And I think if it does break, it'll be the U.S. Put, forcing the issue rather than the Canadian side. Yeah, yeah, pretty well. You know, it's definitely got the potential there with that um, plus 300k number. When was the last time we saw a, a plus 300k off? That seems like it's. Ah, uh, let me bring her up. Hold months. on a second. I'll uh, I'll look it up here in Bloomberg. Just give me. One second. We've been trading this sort of two hundred K water for go. quite a few months. The last three hundred thousand. January thirty first, twenty twelve. There we go. So there we go. Better part of three years. Hmm. I had to go I have the three year table on Bloomberg and I had to go right to the end of it. <laughs> 
There, yeah, wow, that's, that's just that's, huge. Yeah, that's, um, well, biggest number in basically two years. Um, last time we saw the 300K. Well, I mean, a lot of people have been saying that you know, given the amount of stimulus that the U.S. economy has received through the Fed, um, obviously this, this has been a, a record run, I think, in terms of number of months in a row in which we've seen job creation in the U.S. But nonetheless, you, given this amount of stimulus, you know, a truly kind of strong economy, you, a lot of people are saying, that is, is 200K actually, is that actually good? You know, we you know back at the sort of height of the, the boom, you'd see 300, 400, 500K j jobs created, um, which, you know, we're still, still just not quite seeing that. Did, what do you think, Colin? Just a slow, slow lift off or just, um, you know, just the economy's not going to be able to handle it once the Fed starts hiking rates? Yeah, I think we're still in just a steady lift off, and I, I think that people recognize that the Fed is going to have to raise interest rates eventually. You can't stay at 0.25 forever. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure, I, I suspect that most people are figuring, and even if you look at the Fed signals that a year from now, they'll probably be at one or one and a quarter, which is, is not out of line with, uh, with other banks. I mean, Canada's been sitting at 1% for the last four years. So, uh, you know, to to move your interest, and, and of course, to uh, the idea of the, the neutral interest rate being interest rates equal to inflation, and everybody's gunning for two percent, that um, and you're at a quarter of a percent, you're going to go up eventually. And you know, I, mean, I think most people would, nobody's going to really get too excited, and unless if they went up to one percent, yeah. even you know, into the ones. I mean, that's not going to uh, that's not going to break the uh, the economy. And yeah, I'm not convinced anyways. I think most people, most businesses should be able to operate just fine at those kind of levels of interest rates. They're still yeah. historically very low. Yeah, looking at the the euro dollar here, we just just passed down into making a, a lower number past that, past the draggy press conference low. Um, I mean, it's, it's just interesting that this disparity between Europe and the U.S. doesn't exactly seem to be closing. It's widening, if anything. I mean, this European unemployment, and the example of Italy, seeing the record high unemployment. Germany, admittedly, is always a bit of a bit of a standout performer within Europe, but still, you compare that with these kinds of numbers in the U.S., um, you know, it doesn't seem like there's really a fundamental reason why the euro can hold up against the dollar with, you know, more stimulus potentially on the way from the ECB and, and the they're Fed. really heading in opposite directions at this point. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well we're getting close to quarter two. Do we want to uh, perhaps take a see if there's any more questions out there? Yeah. Uh, do do any of you have any questions out there uh, before we uh, before we wrap up? I'm not seeing any on my end. Are you, do you have the? Um, the thing in front yeah, of I, I can. I'm not seeing anything. I, oh, someone's just asking about the DAX. Oh, okay. So let's bring that up. Yeah. So okay, we're seeing the DAX stop. is. I'll start with the, just the longer term, um, but we're seeing. You know, you can see on this daily chart that we've already kind of eclipsed the body of that engulfing candlestick that we were referencing. Mm -hmm. So, see, European markets seem to be following um, following the U.S. higher on this one. Yeah, it's interesting. We pretty much completely filled in that sell-off from. Uh, from yesterday, let's see if we're able to bust through it or not. It will be interesting to uh, to see. And I, I, you know, a certain amount to me, it, it seems as though this is getting propped up from the uh, you know the talk about the ECB more stimulus. But but of course, the reason you're talking about ramping up stimulus is because the economy is not doing so well. So at which yeah. point, which which ends up taking the in the short term, you know, maybe the uh, the liquidity wins out, but in the longer term, then it still hits earnings. Yep. Of course, if the euro keeps crashing, that helps the uh, that helps German economy as well. They're big exporters. So. Yeah, I mean, just quickly before we wind up, Colin. I mean, do you, there was one uh, Fed statement in which they, um, or Fed minutes it was, when they actually referenced the U.S. dollar being a problem. And so, given the divergence that we were just talking about, do you think the Fed are going to bring up the strong dollar as a as a problem again? Given that it does seem to be a bit of a race to the bottom among uh, in the rest of the world, you know, Japan and Europe, mm -hmm. namely. Um, you know, but the, here's, here's the Fed going in the opposite direction. You know, this U.S. dollar is that going to is that going to start hurting corporations? Is that going to be a, an issue? It's a possibility, and I think that's something we got to watch for in the next earnings season. As the U.S. dollar keeps climbing, at what point does that hit U.S. earnings? Uh, for two reasons. First of all, you've got anybody who's a U.S. who's an exporter. Um, 
or or has huge operations worldwide. So if they're an exporter, it makes their goods more expensive in in other countries, which makes it more difficult for them to sell. If they're a uh, if they're a global multi uh, global company, then their overseas earnings get translated back to the U.S. at lower rates, and and even uh, so that's a uh, that's problematic for them as well. So we'll be watching that as we go into the uh, uh, that could be the the big story for the next quarterly earnings season. I think I thought we'd get it a little bit in uh, in the last quarter, but uh, but I guess it was by the time it, the impact probably hadn't been felt yet. I think you'll see it felt full on in the uh, in this quarter. So next earnings season, I think that'll have a uh, a big impact on what happens. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you could be right. Um, we just had a question here about the uh, about the FTSE 100. Obviously, we call it the UK 100. Um, this is my little short term picture. Um, you know, just. We're coming off of, you know, we're basically within this sideways range. We can see that the top is um, this 6,775, um, with the bottom down at around 6,640. And we have this declining trend line. Good example here of um, some kind of technical confluence and support lining up. The reason I've got this green line in here is just that was a kind of breakout area that you can see on this uh, the daily chart where it broke through that, that day's high. And it's kind of, you know, it's what you see in markets when you see a... This is um, it's more of a sideways market, but potentially moving into an upturn trend. And when you see an uptrend, that's what you get, a, a high, a move back, testing the previous high. And you know, if it's a strong market, then it holds that high and moves higher. And uh, so the question that we had is, you know, why isn't the FTSE uh, breaking through into new all-time highs the way the, uh, the German DAX just did yesterday and um, the way the Dow has well, no, the S&P has what 54 times this year or something, but uh, <laughs> not a single instance from the uh, from the FTSE. It's uh, it's you know there's different theories. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, commodities. You know uh, we've got a strong kind of weighting towards oil and gold and uh, sort of mining stocks mm -hmm. in, in the FTSE 100. So it's not even necessarily a UK story. It's almost a sort of uh, a weighting of the index story where you know this, the, the kind of that's not been where the play has been um, of late. You know it's been the kind of tech stocks have really been the ones driving the growth in the US, and we just don't really have those those equivalents over here. The UK 100 only has two tech stocks in there. I think you're absolutely right, Jasper, because we see the same thing with the Canadian market. Uh, Canada and the UK are, are similar in that, in Australia, in that they're more heavily weighted in uh, in banks, mm. well, in, in, uh, sorry, in banks, pumped. energy, and mining, right? So with uh, yeah. and, and in the UK, I think that's that's there's a certain extent to that as well. Perhaps not to the extremes that Canada and Australia have, but certainly the UK is heading more in that direction than in the in the US which is more heavily weighted in in tech and in financials and consumer products it's a very different uh, it is they are very different in terms of their composition no question about it yeah yeah but you know they do sort of uh, you know a very rough rule of thumb is that uh, you know whatever did well the previous year is not the one that's going to do so well uh, this year so it's it's interesting with tech i mean the uh, in uh, 2013, it was one of the top performing sectors. It, it's been up there again in 2000, uh, 2013, 2014. So next year, is that one to see a sort of um, a change around in which you know which sector does does the best? If its financials can improve, maybe that would be the cause of the uh, the FTSE and the, and the Canadian indices breaking out. Uh, anything's possible, especially since uh, I, I've been looking at things like, for example, there's been a lot of the, the big, some of the big tech names missed on earnings this quarter, and there was a big takedown in Apple a couple of days ago. So yeah. th there's cracks in tech. The, the whole thing hasn't fallen apart yet, but we're seeing cracks here, there, and everywhere. It was interesting that that move. Did you? What do you make of that, Colin? Just um, you know. Not um, not to kind of push things out, we're a bit over time here, but just it was interesting on, on Monday. We saw that 7% crash down in intraday on Apple. We saw a complete uh, reversal in, in silver and gold. You know, there's definitely sort of uh, something something going on there, some sort of rotation. Um, what, what do you make of that? Is that was that a sea change on uh Monday, I think what we're seeing uh, certainly is that we've had, at least for the short term, a lot of markets have gotten really overextended, and uh, and and when we do get those kind of things overextended, then you're set up for those kind of correction days. And yeah. I think I think the ones we had were were perhaps more violent than we've seen in a long time. Uh, yeah. No question about it. But at this point, I still think there are more corrections than uh, than than sea change turns. But it remains to be seen. But I think what you're looking at is those are the kind of the, the bull market sell-off and the, the bear market rally is what we saw so far. 
Well, we're still we're still making. There's something like the ten biggest uh, gains, uh, single day gains in the in the Dow have been the majority have been in bear markets, and the the majority of the ten biggest single day losses in the Dow have been in bull markets. You do get these uh, these kind of snap reversals. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, if there are no more questions, I guess we'll uh, we'll wind it up there. Um, hope you all um, did well in the in the trading. If you had trades going in this uh, in this market, definitely some volatility going on. So um, uh, thank you all for attending, and um, uh, I guess we'll we'll see you at the same time next month. It could well be uh, Michael on that occasion. It'll certainly be be Colin, I'm sure. Um, if indeed. Well, so that's um, it's actually yes. not the first week in January, is it? It's going to be the the second week. Second, of January, it's going to be the ninth of January. Will be the next non-firm payrolls, and yeah. uh, and also don't forget that next week, uh, Jasper and I will be holding the uh, the monthly analyst debates webinar. Uh, Jasper will be filling in for uh, for Michael on that, where we'll be back discussing uh, a number of trends in the markets, and I think what we'll, by that point we'll be previewing the Fed meeting as well. So this will be uh, it. Looks like it's going to be uh, the first half of December should be a uh, pretty active time for trading so um, I, I have no doubt we'll have uh, even more to talk about then <laughs> okay well thanks thanks a lot Colin talk to you later my friend thanks everyone thanks, for thanks everyone